Hi there, I'm Sandy Almach, and today I'm starting a series of four advent pages with beautiful backgrounds, made especially for those who don't like to draw in their Bibles, but they love to use lots of color. And I've practiced it already in my Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook since it's on Bible paper. It gives me a great chance to practice mediums or techniques or ideas before transferring them into my Bible. And I bought these little bottles of Dina Wakely acrylics. You can probably do the same technique with whatever acrylics you've got, but I will have the link to them and all the other stuff I'm using as I normally do in all of my videos. It's down in the description. There are six colors in this little set, but I'm just going to use three. Acrylics don't go through in general. I haven't tried out every brand, of course, but I haven't found any that do bleed through. They act as a page prep, so if you want to use stuff on top of them, but I'm not going to do any page prep under. I've already done some journaling because as I was thinking about the hymn, A Little Town of Bethlehem, darkness and light became a real theme for me in what where my head was going about this. And I noticed that in that light bluish color, I could see through to see the words, but I'm not going to include that light bulb from the workbook in my Bible. The verse I'm going to use is Isaiah 42, 16. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. And while this is not a traditional Christmas verse, I thought I would use it for this particular one because of where my mind went. I got stuck on the line about the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. So before I get started on that explanation, let me tell you what I'm doing here. I've marked off my verse so that I leave that area white. I want to have it glow all over the double page spread and then just applying my paints directly onto the paper and then moving them around with a baby wipe. And make sure you keep the paint wet while, while it's moving around. You don't want to like walk out of the room and let it dry because it's going to be harder to move it. But the wetter the baby wipe, the more color it will lift. And so if you're trying to lighten over top of the scripture, then use a wetter baby wipe. And if you're trying to leave more color, then use a drier one. And I'm just going to keep turning it around so that I can find a clean area. I wanted that area right around the verse to be soft and, and kind of uh, really blend nicely into the paper. So I'm going to speed this up while I do the rest of the painting and layering and talk a little bit about hopes and fears because I got stuck on what what does that mean? The hopes and fears of all the years are met in need. And I, I know that he met our hopes by coming to earth to, to save us. But how were our fears met in Bethlehem? And it, the more I thought about it, the more I realized he was answering our fears with hope. He took all the things we were afraid of and answered them by conquering the, the fears. Like, we know who the victor is. We know that he's going to conquer them all. He has overcome everything. So we have no more need to be afraid of anything because we have him. He has come to earth and, and saved us. So I thought that was a really beautiful thing to have as a devotional for Advent. So all of these four videos are going to be based on songs. I did have a little trouble with my paper curling because I wasn't being very careful. But in general, even with page prep, um, you'll get a little bit of paper curling kind of thing. Um, but I only had that one instance of it being a problem as soon as I laid it back down. It was just fine. But do make sure that you put paper underneath while you're working so that you don't get big purple paint blobs down the side of your Bible. So just putting a little sheet of that will keep that from being a problem. On the right side, the words are on the left. So I have a bigger, wider area that I can do that dark color because I wanted to do my... Um, my verse, my words on it in white pen. Very carefully took off my washi tape and I'm just going to make sure I can smooth out any rough edges on that little blend. And then I decided I did want to, after all, do the other page too. And I want that glow to just explode off the page basically and, and draw my attention to that verse but I still want to be able to read the words. And you can see that even though I have the dark blue and the lighter blue mixed on that particular page, you can still read the words. And in person, you can actually read them much better than you probably can on video. So know that that is certainly possible. On the left side, I'm going to have a little bigger of an issue because the words are further over to the left. 
I don't have as big a gap on the right hand side. So I started my dark blue a little too soon probably. So I ended up working it pretty hard and know that you can beat up Bible paper. And that's probably why some people like to page prep first. I'd prefer to just learn and be a little more careful. And now I know if I'm gonna do this, I'm just not going to put as many layers on here and be more conscious of the fact that I only have that two inch border on the left this time instead of thinking, oh yeah, I'll just do it the same way as I did on the right hand side because I had to remove more of the color. I ended up with one little teeny tiny spot where I had a, a little tiny hole that went through so I did get one drop of blue on the other side of the page. And I'll show you that at the end, but it's not an issue. I can always just gesso over that one little spot if I ever decide to journal on the other side. And that's one thing to remember if you do find that you had something that bled through, you tried a medium and it didn't work. The chances of needing to journal on the other side are not all that huge. I'm just going to tell you that there are thousands of pages this, well, okay, hundreds of pages, I guess not thousands, but there are hundreds of pages in your Bible to journal. And I very rarely end up journaling on both sides of any sheet of paper. Uh, the page on the right hand side does have something on the back of it, but that doesn't happen very often given even as many pages as I do. So it's generally not an issue. So I've sandwiched those two sheets of paper after they're all completely dry in between uh, three sheets of like just com regular computer paper and you can see this is the one that was on the back side of the right hand side there so that um, none of that paint went through. I did my lettering in white pen. I will have that in the doobly-doo down below if you want to print it out and put it in your Bible but uh, you can journal whatever you'd like with whatever verse you want. There's my little spot of blue. See how tiny that is? No big deal. Easily fixable. But there we go. The hopes and fears of all my years are met in Jesus tonight. So it's a great reminder during the Christmas season that our hopes and our fears are met. Anything we were afraid of has been answered by hope. So if there's anything you're afraid of right now, then know that Jesus has it conquered. He's already got it covered. No big deal. So I hope you will join me next week for the next one in this Advent series. You can join me over on Facebook. I have a Facebook group full of wonderful people from all over the world sharing their journaling. And I will see you again next week. God bless you.